Right, Talio de Champs. Now there's new Macs coming out. The new M1X Macs, the MacBook Pro 14, MacBook Pro 16, drop in within the next month or so. But I'm going to tell you why in this video the M1 Macs cannot be beat. MacBook Air and MacBook Pro 13, the current M1 Macs. And after this video, you may decide you do not need one of these MacBook Pro 16s or 14s, the new ones coming out. Save your money because I cannot tell you how much these MacBook Pro and MacBook Air have changed my world. Not only my world, my girlfriend's world. I think you'll be amazed about what these laptops done and we're talking about the base models with 8 gigabytes of RAM. So think about it, the next MacBook Pro 14, 16, they're going to be very expensive, right? Let's put into context how much a base model M1 Mac costs. So we talk about the MacBook Air, $999 or $1,000 if you're a student or you get it on sale, right? Now I had both the Air and the Pro, and just think about what you get at that sort of price, $900, $1,000. Now I bought the M1 Mac just to be my Ultrabook, you know, to carry around, lightweight, sort of, you know, small portable laptop I can take around with me anywhere, you know, run my YouTube channel. Maybe play some light game in Football Manager Civilization. A bit of productivity, web surfing, watch some content, etc. I, for not one minute, ever thought this would be my main production machine. And yet it was. For the last, oh, pretty much most of this year, the M1 Mac base model has been my main production machine. That is mind-blowing. Think about how much money you have to spend to be able to edit 6K footage. I mean, in the Windows world, you're going to have to get something with a GPU. You're going to have to get something with a good display as well. You're probably looking at about $2,000 to get a competent video editor. Even the MacBook Pro 16, the Intel version, you're looking at that sort of money as well. This thing can handle my 6K footage, no problem. All right, so when you stack layers and add effects and stuff like that maybe it slows down a bit but pretty much for the majority of work i do other than the screen being small it works for me as good as the macbook pro 16 and except when i put a lot of lays and effects as i just said the macbook pro 16 is still better in that regard you have to remember that this is the base model <laughs> and it's got eight gigs so then you have my girlfriend so we're in lockdown so she works in the education industry and she does a lot of stuff from home now you know with students you know zoom meetings etc she had the intel mac okay before this i've handed over my m1 mac to her because now the new laptops are coming you know new xps i'm starting to use the windows laptops that are coming through now mainly because of the screen size because 13 inch is just too small for me and i will talk about some of the downfalls of the m1 mac in a minute but she could never last until you know one o'clock like by lunchtime her battery would be like 30 percent on the intel mac she used to always have to carry the power brick or plug in. She's always, oh, I forgot to charge the power brick and, oh, go get me the charger. Because she'll be running out of power just shortly after lunchtime. Now she has the M1 Mac, pretty much the same model, 8 gigs RAM, base model MacBook Pro and Wolf. The thing lasts all day, no problem. Battery pack, never needed a battery pack ever. I don't think it's ever got down to below 40% where the Intel Mac was, you know, well below 50% at lunchtime. So it is actually changed her world it's changed my world i never thought it'll be a main production machine and yeah you can't beat these m1 max and i'm just saying maybe if you're thinking of the 16 or the next 14 inch m1x mac maybe you don't have to do it because if i had an m1 mac with 16 gigs ram that's all the power i need now of course they're going to be much more powerful the new ones are going to have more performance cores more gpu cores but if i can edit my 6k footage with no problem on the base model Maybe you can save yourself the money. The only downside is the screen size, yeah. You can only use one external display. That's a problem. Sometimes it doesn't read the USBs at full speed. So I have USB SSDs and yeah, some of them don't read at full speed. And also, as I said, when you layer lots of effects and stuff like that, the GPU is the weak point of the M1. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong here. The M1 Max GPU is better than any other integrated solution from Intel and AMD. But if you're comparing it to 3060s, 37s, 70s, 3080s, which of course costs a lot more, but you know, it's not in the same ballpark in terms of GPU performance. So, when you had lots of effects, or layers, and stuff like that, a dedicated GPU is still better, and that's even the case with the MacBook Pro 16. So, we'll see what happens with the M1X Max, especially the MacBook Pro 16, doubling the GPU cores, giving it more power. We'll see where the GPU sit then. Will it compete with the Windows still, 3070s, 3080s? Oh, I'm a bit doubtful there, but anything that's optimized, the M1 
M1 Max is just going to sing. And that's another thing about the M1 Max. If it's not optimized for the M1 Max, they can be slow. So anything that's outside what is optimized for the, you know, the M1 Max, it just feels like a normal regular laptop. And by the way, how fast it launches stuff. That is just amazing. It feels so quick. It's like the first time you went from a hard drive to an SSD, that's what it's like using an M1 Mac. You get that same feeling of how fast it is. So anyway, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.